Nate, good morning. How are you, my man? Good morning, Glenn. I'm good. Um, so this, the, your father is the pastor of this Westboro uh, Baptist Church, Fred Phelps. Right. Um, and uh, you were sort of born into this, I suppose. You, gr- you grew up in the beginning part of your life. This was just a way of life for you. Yeah, first 18 years of my life. Uh, and what was it like during those first 18 years? Well, if you could see it as a uh, sort of a uh, training camp for what we're seeing today, um, you know, all of the components, all of the elements that were necessary to build up that, like nine of my siblings are still there, and, and they're the core of that that group of radical uh, religious thinkers. Yeah, I mean, as this Westboro Baptist Church, is there any, are there any members that really aren't part of the family? There was one, uh, when we were growing up there, there were two families from uh, the Topeka area that were there uh, pretty, pretty consistently throughout those years. Uh, they, uh, for the most part, are all gone. I think one or two of them are married to um, my brothers or sisters. So they've all kind of uh, inbred now. And uh, But the only family there now is a, a fellow that came up from Florida to do a, a um, film about my father back in the early 90s, and, and he liked what he saw, so he moved his family up there. So he goes out there, he goes, I'm going to do a, a, a film on these guys. Boy, these they, they seem like a good group of people. I'm going to stick around, huh? That's yeah, strange. That's right. <laughs> so uh, when you were a kid, uh, yeah. your father, Fred Phelps, you say that he would beat you and, and all of the children. Yeah, and as well as my mother. He was, uh, you know, they, they like to uh, um, try to call it something else. So so I like to talk in terms of specifically what he did. He had a, um, uh, I don't know how many folks are familiar with what a mattock is, but it's a f- uh, farming or, or it's a tool for pulling up roots. And, and the handle of it's about four and a half feet long with about a, 13 inch circumference at the the uh, thick end, mm-hmm. and he would swing that like a baseball bat and and hit the kids on the back of the legs all the way down behind the knees until the the skin split and bled. So, as well as he would kick him in the stomach with his knee and and uh, use his fists wherever he could hit, including the face area. So that was f- factually what he did, and I leave it. Why would he? Why would he beat you? Well, he, I mean, he, he generally had an excuse if he didn't like what one of us did or if uh, uh, sometimes he just was in a sour mood and then he would go looking for trouble. And uh, he he believed the Bible justified it, you know, with those passages that talk about raising up your kids, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child, that kind of thing. So, And he also believed that the Bible gave him permission to do the same thing to his wife, so... He was violent towards our mother as well. Do you think that uh, some? The, do you think that he really believes all of this stuff, or does he use this to justify uh, things that he wants to do? Beating his wife, his kids, getting his way, doing whatever. I, th- I think those are one and the same. I think he believes it, and I think he also is has these tendencies towards violence and towards uh, you know he's got whatever for whatever reason he's got that that rage in him and. Uh, so this all fit very well. Uh, so you, how many kids were in your family, uh, Nate? Well, there's 13 of us. Okay. And you ran away from home at the age of 18. Yeah, my, my older brother left when he was 19, and, and he was ultimately successful, even though my father moved heaven and earth to try to pull him back into his sphere of influence. But he succeeded in leaving because my father ultimately didn't have a a legal leg to stand on. Uh, my oldest sister, on the other hand, left when she was 17, and she got we literally tracked her down and physically forced her back home. And he uh, was violently abusive to her for the last six months until she was 18 and left again. So I I learned from from those two lessons that if I was going to do it properly and as safely as possible, that I had to keep it to myself and I had to prepare and then wait till I was 18. So I literally left at the stroke of midnight on my 18th birthday. And you didn't tell anyone that you were going to leave? No one. Yeah. And how did you, how did you do it? You, you, well, I, I had saved up a little bit of money and there was a, 
a fellow who was a security guard at our high school had an old Rambler Classic for sale. I bought that for 300 bucks and he kept it hidden and, you know, quietly packed up what little belongings I had and, and hid them in the garage of the uh, church building. And uh, then on the night of my 18th birthday, I waited till everyone was asleep and and uh, snuck out and moved the car down and loaded it up and then stood, came back in the house and stood at the bottom of the stairs in the, in the uh, dining room and watched the clock tick up to uh, midnight. And then I left. And then you left at the stroke of midnight so that he couldn't bring you back because you were 18. You were a legal adult. When you were growing up, how did the other kids treat you as as members of this Westboro Baptist Church The Fred Phelps runs this uh, whack job. Um, how, how did people in the community and other kids treat you guys? Well, you know, one of one of the doctrines that uh, or ideas that he gleaned from the Bible was that that we were to be um, separate from the rest of the world. So he looked for ways to uh, implement that and make sure that we were different. Uh, so we were seen as different, by and large, by the community and by our, our classmates. Uh, one of the specific things he did was around Christmas time, he, uh, we didn't celebrate Christmas, so he had an ongoing battle with the school district where uh, we were required to leave the classroom every time anything was done, like singing Christmas carols or anything to celebrate the holiday. We why had Why wouldn't they, I would think that, it, I mean, isn't the uh, Christian, uh, he doesn't like Christmas, though. Well... Because his argument was that the Bible doesn't say to celebrate his his birth; it says to celebrate his his death. It's and as well as the the pagan origins of of modern day uh, Christmas. Um, he just didn't want to have anything to do with it. He thought it was a an abomination. So, um, what else you know, did they teach you uh, when you were growing up? Uh, uh, you were indoctrinated into this this Westboro Baptist Church and whatever the beliefs were. What were the main tenets of that belief? Well, it, it, it is a uh, rigid form of Calvinism, and Calvinism is, you know, the cornerstone of that is this idea of absolute predestination that says uh, we don't choose, God chooses, and God chooses very few. Um, and then from that, he just, over the years, as he looked at the various religions and, and ideologies that were out there and tore them down, he came to the conclusion pretty quickly that, that we were the only people left on the earth who were God's true uh, chosen ones. And so then he just kind of built that idea up over the years and justified it, and uh, we became more more and more isolated and and uh, more and more convinced of that, of that idea. And then it, you know, over the years it evolved into this idea that none of us were ever going to die. Christ was going to return before, you know, that death was a, a form of God's judgment. So they, today they believe that Christ's return is imminent. They, they, they held that Obama was the Antichrist, but um, the date of, of his uh, destruction has passed, so they, they've had to alter that. And frankly, I don't know what they believe about Obama now, but just a lot of really odd Ideas. How did they get into the whole? The, they they came to prominence at least with me with the GodHatesFags.com website that they used to run. Well, it started back in 1991. There was a local uh, park there in Topeka that was a popular gathering place for uh, uh, gay people, and so they made some kind of uh, ragged, handmade signs that they held their protest there, and it was. It got so vitriolic and ugly there in the local community that, um, and my father has always been one that if you are uh, if you are in disagreement with him, he's just obstinate about it, and then he becomes aggressive. So that same pattern we see today is what really kind of started the whole thing, and then it's evolved into this idea that that they are uh, this is this is part of the evidence that the end times are coming because they've met so much resistance. That must prove that God is on their side. And, and so they started picketing the funerals of prominent gay people who had died of AIDS or whatever, right? So that didn't get a whole lot of attention. So they kind of faded from uh, visibility, you know, public visibility. And then the war started, and he hit on that idea of protesting at the funerals of soldiers. 
ostensibly because, like you said earlier, they're serving a country that is cursed by God, so God's going to kill them as uh, punishment for us uh, supporting gay rights in this country. So, and 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 he actually believes that you they they you know this because I've always wondered whether they just do this for publicity. I mean, I know obviously know that they have these weird religious beliefs, but. Yeah, uh, they figured out that they can get a lot of play out of going to picket these, or they don't even go and picket so much anymore. They just threaten to picket, and they get a bunch of uh, press over it. Yeah, that's exactly right. They don't need to spend the money. You know, they were spending upwards of three hundred thousand dollars a year traveling all over, and as the uh, younger people have started leaving, the the money source has died off. So they've had to get creative. Uh, but to answer your your earlier question yeah i think um, i mean i have no doubt that my father believes this i have to believe that a lot of my older siblings believe it now because of the way they're acting um how are they getting three hundred thousand dollars to a year to spend to go picket funerals and stuff well my father required everyone to tithe you know the ten percent and then when this campaign started he uh he got them all to agree to up it to 30%. So they're funding it themselves, you know, from their income. Now, it seems to me that, again, they they just sort of threaten to uh, picket any 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 time there's something in the news. Uh, I know that they threatened to picket the funerals of these poor kids that were killed at the Sandy Hook Elementary School. Um, and they said, well, we're going to pick at that because uh, God's punishing the uh, killing these kids because you support gay marriage or whatever. Now, to my knowledge, they didn't actually show up and do any of that, right? They were there, but they uh, there was some local negotiating going on where they never actually showed up at the, any of the specific funerals. Uh, but they were there in that area and uh, did some kind of generic protesting, but... Uh, one of the things that they've done over the years is they'll, like when, when that uh, congresswoman was shot in, in Tucson, mm -hmm. uh, threatened to come down, because I think there was a little nine-year-old girl that had been killed in that incident. And that convinced, uh, well, they ended up getting like an hour or so of, of airtime to to uh, spread the word from a radio station up in uh, the Toronto area. So they've done that two or three times where they were able to negotiate some free airtime to spew their their dogma uh, rather than going to protest at some sensitive situation, right? So they'll throw that out there for that reason now just to, to try to get some free airtime. Um, How old were you when you figured out that all this stuff they were spewing to you was crap? Uh, I would say I was about uh, four. 45. <laughs> I mean, when I left there, I, I left more because of the violence and, and um, because I didn't feel like I belonged there anymore. But I left believing that I was going to die and go to hell because I had made that decision. It took years to let go of all of the... You're kidding. I thought that you would have left because you figured out that the kind of uh, stuff that your father was teaching at this Westboro Baptist Church was was nonsense. But you left because uh, primarily because he was beating you. Yeah, I mean, you grow up in a situation like that, uh, Rover, and, and you, you, you really don't have a point of reference as a young child. I mean, the world is as your as you're told, as your right? Parents tell you it is, right? So, um, I certainly had a lot of hope that some of it was wrong, um, and I I knew without a doubt that the way my father behaved was inconsistent with you know the basic. Um, my basic nature was as far as how he treated other humans. So um, that part of it, I had no doubt in my mind about. But yeah, no, I struggled for years with the religious question. Well, I know that it, I'm reading here, you left at 18, but you didn't officially leave the Westboro Baptist Church for another few years after that, is yeah, what it says. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, because you're, you're, you're clinging to the family ties and, you know, you're, you're ostracized from the family. So there's a lot of uh, emotional pressure to try to stay connected because of that, and uh, as well as as this concern that you know God's out there waiting for you to leave, and He's going to slap you down. So when when we're confronted with the troubles that you know the world provides all of us, 
our framework was that it was God punishing us. So it's very difficult to pull yourself away from that. Um, and I spent years in mainstream Christianity as well, thinking that there was something to find there as well. So, uh, it yeah, it takes years to unravel that indoctrination. Nate Phelps is on with us. He's the son of Pastor Fred Phelps of Westboro Baptist Church, who you hear about in the news for going to the, the, this, these, this group that goes and pickets funerals of soldiers. And I, 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 they threatened to picket the funerals of uh, those firefighters uh, out in New York who were shot by that wacko who uh, was, was picking them off. Um, I don't know if they actually did or not, but um, his website is natephelps.com. Um, do you, Nate, uh, have an opinion on the best way to deal or, or how should, how should what, what should society do to deal with your father? Yeah, that's a great question. I, th- I think that we need to understand that, that if we have a goal of, of uh, stopping them, that's not a good goal to have because there is no legal or uh, moral basis for doing that. I'm in favor of free speech. Um, but I do think that, the, you know, like the question of whether they can protest at funerals, the laws that have passed around this country are legitimate because even though it's not enshrined in the Constitution, we have behaved with the de facto right of burying our loved ones in peace for since since man was around. So it's a question of competing rights there. Um, I think that when they do these kind of protests, uh, the better thing to do is to rally the the community to come out in support of those that are being targeted and turn it into a positive experience for the community rather than just letting them uh, dictate that they're going to come in there and and uh, torture the the people in that community so um, short of of absolutely ignoring them which is would, would ultimately be the the uh, solution I think we have to do something positive when they when they do come out and protest I've seen videos where they've been attacked or rocks have been thrown at vans that they were driving the and stuff, right? Uh, yeah. Do they ever just get they ever get their asses beaten or anything? Not not yet. <laughs> how's I don't know how that's possible. How they haven't gotten well, They say it's because God's protecting them. Uh, I say it's because we've done such a good job over the years of of uh, convincing society that violence isn't the answer and, and hatefulness isn't the answer. Would they make you go out there and, and picket and protest at various things when you were a kid? Well, we never did protesting, but he certainly was in, uh, training us up for something just like this. We were we were required to not only stand against any false ideas out there, but um, if we weren't as vitriolic and as, as uh, aggressive as he was, then we would get beat for that, for being too soft and too weak. So, um, you know, like I said, it, it, if you could could watch a, a film of, of our, uh, you know, being raised there, it, it would look like it was a boot camp for exactly what we're seeing today. Uh, Nate's website is natephelps.com. Uh, he is on Facebook, too, facebook.com slash natephelps. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, it's an interesting story. I'm glad that you were able to get out of out of this. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of it sounds like a lot of your siblings. I think there were 13 children. Yeah, a lot of them are still a part of this Westboro Baptist Church. Yeah, they're the core of it. Nine of my uh, 12 siblings are are the heart of Westboro Baptist Church, and then their kids are the you know backing them up. Do you have any contact with the family at all? I uh, can't. But some of them, you know, like I said, some of the younger ones are leaving, so I've started to develop relationship with with some of them. And, and then, of course, two of the of the other ones that left, um, I've had a good relationship with over the years. So, Well, uh, Nate, I appreciate you coming on, and I'm glad you were able to get out, uh, out of that. Check out his website, natephelps.com. I appreciate the story, my man. Thank you very much, Over. Thank you, Nate Phelps.